Fighter. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, we'll wait for some time. We'll see how many other people will join and then we'll start in another two to three minutes. As of now, everybody's mic is muted. So we will not be hearing you speak. When we have questions in the end and we will unmute you. So we have totally 14 participants so far and wait and a minute or two before starting. I get used to using Zoom. I hope everybody has uh, everybody a chance to use Zoom in like during the lockdown, lockdown period. So when you go down there's a place where you can there's a chat where you can ask questions if you have any questions am i audible to everyone if anybody can write and say okay yeah can everybody hear me Will it be possible? Yes, okay, good. So two responses. Okay, so I think we're good to start now. There are a few people coming in, so I think we, well, it might be good to wait as well. So I hope this lockdown learning will be good for everybody and we will try to share as much knowledge as possible, I guess. So on behalf of Speech and Hearing Association of Nepal, I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, webinar. So uh, first of the webinar today, we are talk going to talk about masking and the presenter for today is Anuj Kumar Neopane, uh, who is associate professor at, yeah, at Bharati Vidyapit, which is the university in Pune. So he's currently doing his PhD there. Uh, so uh, Anuj, can you, uh, can, uh, can you take yourself and be a host now? So I'm going to make you a host and you can take it from there. Uh, thank you, Vivek. Uh, I think everyone are, uh, I'm audible to everyone. And uh, good evening, everyone, and hope everyone are doing good in this lockdown period, wherever we are. Uh, so with this, I would like to share my slides and start with the today's topic, back to basics, uh, clinical masking. Is my slides visible? Uh, okay, I hope it is visible. Visible. Yeah. Just before you start, so, uh, yeah, can I ask everyone to mute their mic just just to make sure that there is no disturbance? Okay. Yeah, we're good to go. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, I'd like to start with my topic, 
clinical masking, which I am going to discuss today. And before talking about clinical masking, I just want to go briefly about what is pyotone audiometry and what are the procedures we are going to follow over here. And then the need of masking and different procedures of masking and ultimately uh, which procedure uh, where, where we follow and all. So pyotone audiometry is a subjective behavioral measurement of hearing threshold. Uh, we are going to use the pyotone stimuli, pulse, wobber, continuous tone, whichever it is suitable for the condition specific. And it is a gold standard for identifying hearing sensitivity of an individual. So it comprises of two steps. Stimulation of air conduction threshold, which might be with, with headphone or insert phone. And stimulation of bone conduction threshold, it is, it is via the bone vibrator, particularly B71. And in this figure, we can see here the uh, air conduction threshold estimation and bone conduction threshold estimation and which all mechanism it is being uh, 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 checked by the particular. Uh, like in this example, we can see air conduction threshold will measure conductive mechanism as well as sensor neural mechanism. However, the bone conduction uh, testing will check the integrity of inner ear and outer nerve. So therefore, if we are going to find out the difference between these two, that meant to be ABZ or airborne gap, which talks about the integrity of conductive mechanism, whether it is affected or not. And based on that, we are going to determine what type of hearing loss we are going to have. There are different psychophysical methods for threshold estimation, but mostly used is the ASHA protocol of manual threshold estimation, which is the combination of daily listening check plus Kahard circle uh, modified Huxon West like method of 1959. So particularly uh, once we determine the threshold uh, or the threshold estimation of the AC and BC is done, we are going to plot it in the audiogram, which is the standard two dimensional plot of representation. Uh, and there are different symbols which are uh, uniformly used all over the world. Uh, uh, these symbols doesn't mean any particular, uh, uh, or there is no such meaning to these symbols, but these symbols are uh, just used uh, uniformly all over the world. And thus, with the help of this uh, plotting in the audiogram, we are able to determine the degree, type, and configuration of the hearing loss. So the degree of hearing loss, uh, we are particularly using Clark classification of uh, uh, to, uh, determine the severity of the hearing loss, particularly here, there is an inclusion of slight hearing loss or minimal hearing loss, which particularly in case of Goodman's classification was missing. And so these values of determining degree of hearing loss are particularly achieved from PTA average, which might be PTA1 or PTA2 or PTA of four frequencies. And this might vary from clinics to clinics some institution to institution, they might vary uh, which PTA you are going to achieve. Particularly PTA2 is the one which we are going to use for sloppy hearing loss, sloping hearing loss. Then type of hearing loss based on air conduction threshold, bone conduction threshold and ABG gap, it might be any of the three type of hearing loss. Pattern of the hearing loss based on positive and negative slope of the air conduction threshold, we might have variety of patterns of the hearing loss and we might mention these are patterns in our uh, diagnosis, a provisional diagnosis for better representation. In case of asymmetrical or unilateral hearing loss, there are chances of non-test ear to take part while the test ear is getting stimulated, giving rise to false positive response or sad curve. So it might be due to the aerial radiation transmission through headband or positive bone conduction transmission. So any of the three can give rise to false positive response. So this is what is called SADO curve. So SADO curve is nothing but the response curve plotted for the test year due to the participation of the non-test year. It can lead to wrong diagnosis with inaccurate interpretation of severity, type and pattern of hearing loss. It can affect the mode of surgical and oral habilitation. Overall, it will affect the client's 
habilitation aspect and it indicates the need of clinical masking how to know the presence of shadow curve so we should know first how when there is a shadow curve or when there is a false positive response being achieved so when we achieve ac of the test here minus bc of the non test here or the common bc more than equal to 10 dvhl then that is a condition where we need to have bc masking done because it crosses the ia of the bc more than 0 db similarly when there is ac of the test here minus bc of the non test here that is more than equal to 40 db then it also shows there is a need of ac bc, BC ac and speech masking to be done so these all conditions when the value is uh, more than 10 dbhl it shows there is need of masking or you are getting shadow curve or the wrong curve which is not correct representation of an individual cochlea for example i would just like to give one example for better understanding of the masking here in the right ear there is a pta of 35 db and left ear the pta is 13.75 db and our common bc is 5 db and 10 db around it's a normal range so if we diagnose just based on this it is a mild conductive hearing loss and left ear hearing sensitivity within normal limits but if we consider ac of the test ear and the bc of the non test ear that meant to say for example if we are taking 1 kilohertz ac of the test ear is 35 and bc of the non test ear is 5 so the difference between these two is more than 10 so there is need of masking across from 250 till 4 kilohertz there is a need of masking but we haven't done it over here and we wrongly represented right ear as having mild conductive hearing loss but if we do masking then we are getting the value as right ear mass value as 20 a mass bc value as 20 25 30 25 and 30 representing right ear as a mild sensor neural hearing loss and left ear as hearing sensitivity within normal limits this shows the need of masking like earlier the picture what we are seeing is right ear was showing as a mild conductive hearing loss so the next intervention might be the medical approach okay and which was not necessary for this client which uh, our example where there is a mild sensor neural hearing loss and the approach of intervention should be oral rehabilitation and the condition this kind of condition might be vice versa so with this much rational uh, example of masking we would have come to know regarding the rationale for masking and what we exactly do in masking is nothing but the limit uh, it will limit the participation of non-test ear with the presentation of noise while the test ear is stimulated with tone simultaneously there are different terminologies that we should understand before going to the procedure or understanding the procedure of masking there are interaural attenuation crossover and cross hearing interaural attenuation it is the amount of sound attenuation provided by the transducers when presented to the specific ear so how much is the sound attenuated by the transducer when we are using it from reaching the other ear so it is the quality of the transducer so it depend it is dependent on the transducers contact to the relative surface area of the skull Supraoral earphones have larger area of uh, exposure to the skull than insert phone, giving rise to lower trans in IA value. In this figure, we can see the IA value for TDS49 and insert earphones ER3A across different frequencies, which we can see it is varying across frequencies and TDS49 is significantly lower in its value than that of the insert earphone but clinically taking each value of ia separately is difficult so generally what we consider is ia for bone vibrator as zero ia for supraoral earphones as 40 and ia for insert earphones as 70 for our flexibility in clinic now the another 
uh, terminology that we should consider is crossover and crossover is nothing but when the signal delivered to the present test ear it reaches the non test ear so this phenomenon is called crossover and so what is exactly happening over here is when the signal is presented to the test ear if that value whatever we are presenting to the test ear is crossing that of the ia then it will reach the non test ear so in the first figure what we can see is crossover via phone conduction route to the non test ear second is earphone at the test ear is being giving the stimulus and it is reaching the non test cochlea via the bone conduction route so there is a minor difference between crossover and cross hearing which is getting uh, clear with this example cross cross hearing is the condition when the signal delivered to the patient's test ear is audible in the non test ear crossover may or may not be audible but to be a cross hearing it should be audible to the non test ear so here in the example what we can see is our test ear is being provided with the signal at 30 db in the via the bone vibrator and bone conduction ia is zero so the whatever the value we are giving in this ear will be automatically heard by the other cochlea also so the 30 db is reaching to other side at the non test ear if the non test ear threshold is 20 db suppose then the cross hearing value is nothing but 30 db what it reaches the other ear minus 20 db its threshold so 10 db is the cross hearing that is happening in the non test ear so that this determines the need of masking other terminologies which we should understand before understanding the concept of masking is masker noise delivered to the non test ear that might be nearby noise centered at particular frequency central frequency uh, particularly we use nearby noise for masking pure tones for ac and bc then wide band noise white noise or speech noise this is particularly used for speech masking then there is a maski the test ear in which the test tone is presented and masking the it is the procedure of achieving the true threshold of the test ear and mask threshold is the actual threshold obtained in the test ear so uh, methods approaches of masking there are variety of methods approaches being used across different clinics institutes around the globe uh and it might vary from the institute to institute but the main thing is we should uh use the approaches that is being given in the literature or somewhere the valid and standardization is being done so it will not uh, misdiagnose or misrepresent the uh, particular uh, condition of an individual with hearing loss so one of the most uh, mentioned method our most talked about method in the literature is plateau seeking method by hood 1960 it is also known as hood's technique of masking so there are three uh, basic terminologies in plateau seeking method that is minimal masking level maximum masking level and effective masking level so minimal masking level is the level where the masking should start maximum masking level is the level till which the noise can be given and there is something called under masking and over masking under masking is the level if you are giving the noise at this level it won't affect the non test ears participation and over masking is the level where the noise given to the non test ear will affect the perception of the tone in the test ear and in between minimum effective masking level and maximum effective masking level there is a plateau so mostly it is a ideal condition being shown in the picture it can be more understandable with the next uh, uh, slide here in this slide what we can see is uh, we are having test ear and the non test ear so in the first picture it is showing the condition of under masking where masking noise is being presented to the non test ear and is being presented to the test ear but what is happening is like the tone is presented and the tone which is presented to the test ear is being heard by the non test ear with this arrow being shown because the masking noise is not sufficient so because of which 
still the response which is given uh, which we are achieving is the response given by the non test here so this should be avoided another is the condition where we are having masking noise given to the non test here and tone given to the test here so both the sides are equally effective like masking noise is being enough uh, the amount of masking noise is enough or enough it is provided to the non test here so that it is uh, that tone by the test here is not heard by the non test here so this is the condition where effective masking is happening and we are going to achieve uh, the plateau another is the over masking condition where the masking noise is too loud that we have bone conduction whatever we are presenting in this uh, non test here will be heard by the test here and therefore it will affect the perception of tone in the test here uh, and so it is it this should also not happen so this is the condition known as over masking so we are preferably going to achieve the effective masking neither under masking nor over masking so with this uh, we'd like to start the procedure of how to do masking for each of the conditions so we have already understood when to do bc masking when the ac of the test here minus bc of the non test here is more than equal to 10 db that condition tells us that bc masking is required so the formula for bc masking is presentation level minus ia plus avg of the non test here plus occlusion effect plus safety factor so here the occlusion effect we can achieve from this table and safety factor uh, mostly we'll take it as 5 or 10 db so in this uh, uh, presentation i have considered safety factor as 10 and it depends from clinics to clinics how much you want to keep the safety factor the another one is maximum masking level where ia plus bc of the non test here is considered here the uh, for minimum masking level the presentation level for bc will be the bc of the non test here the particular frequency bc of the non test here and ia always the minimum masking level the ia will be the ia of the transducer providing tone and for maximum masking level ia will be the ia of the transducer providing noise okay so we should always be sure about that here the example i have tried to give for better understanding and the uh, here if we do ac of the test here minus bc of the non test here we will find out from 250 till 4 kilohertz all requires masking but we are taking the example of only 1 kilohertz for simplification so minimum masking level for 1 kilohertz will be presentation level that is 5 here minus ia because bc ia is zero we have considered so zero plus abg of the non test here that is 15 minus 5 that is of the non test here plus 10 that is occlusion effect for that particular frequency from the earlier table plus safety factor 10 so total is 35 so we'll start giving noise at the level of 35 and maximum masking level is ia that is the headphone ia if we are using headphone to give the noise that will be 40 or uh, if we are using insert phone to give noise then that will be 70 plus bc of the non test here that is 5 so it will be 45 or 75 so here we can see we can start giving noise from 35 db till 45 db or 35 db till 75 db so here one more thing we can observe is the usage of insert phones or in importance of insert phone because when we are using headphone we can give noise from 35 till 45 so we might not achieve plateau we might lead it might lead to masking dilemma also so to avoid that we can use insert phone and keep the bigger range that is from 35 till 75 db so in this way we can keep do the plateau method here as shown in the table until we achieve Three yes response. Now we'll talk about the AC masking method, where the minimum masking level will be as shown, and maximum masking level. Okay, here the minimum masking level, the presentation level, will be the value of the unmasked AC of that same test year, and then IA will be. the uh i of the tone uh i of the transducer giving tone 
plus ABC of the non-test here plus safety factor we can consider 10 only and particularly here the IA will be 40 because we are using headphone to keep the tone and if it is a maximum masking level IA that is either the 40 or 70 if we are using headphone to keep the noise 40 if we are using insert phone then 70 plus BC of the test here so in this way we are going to use this procedure to find out flat tube for masking AC then there is speech masking where there are two types of masking in speech particularly SRT masking and SIS masking so SRT masking is the masking of uh, speech threshold we'll also say speech threshold masking and for SIS masking we say supra threshold masking so first we'll talk about SRT masking and it is also in the condition like same as uh, AC masking when AC of the test here minus BC of the non-test here is more than equal to 40 because it crosses at least the headphones IE. So here minimum masking level is SRT that is the presentation level minus IE plus ABC of the non-test here for AC masking. So here the ABC of the non-test here is a bit confusing because here we are going to take AC as the SRT of the or the presentation level only uh, of the non-test here minus BC will be the best BC of the non-test here. So for example I can show it in the next slide. Let us consider particularly the SRT and the right ear it is 50 left ear 10 and mass right ear we don't know. We are supposed to find out. So SRT the value uh, to find out minimum masking level is SRT that is presentation level is 50 what is here that is what is 50 minus IA is 40 because we are using headphone plus ABG of the non-test ear that is 10 minus 5 that meant to say left ear SRT that is 10 minus best BC of the left, left ear among all these values the best BC is 5 so we will consider that so we are going to find out how it has 15 so it is a minimum masking level then there is a maximum masking level we are going to find out based on IA plus BC of the test here IA we have it might be 40 or 70 which transducer we use insert phone or headphone plus 30 BC of the test here so BC of the test here among all these 30 is the best value so we are going to keep 30 so either it will be 70 or 100 so in this way we have the range 15 and 100 so in this way we are going to start our masking level from 15 and can go till 100 and in between somewhere we are supposed to get plateau and this range between this is called effective masking level so here in this figure we can see the same thing and so the whatever the range we are giving here in the test here or the right here is the level of the mic where we are going to provide the spondy words as we are doing SRT okay and somewhere we are getting S response then we'll increase the noise level no response then we are going to increase the test level then no response if we are still getting then we are increasing the test level and at the end we are giving, increasing the noise level such so that consistently if we are getting three response while it's consistently increasing the noise level by 10 dB or 5 dB here I have shown the 5 dB 10 dB then that is called the play tube okay. so the procedure might vary by 10 or 5 dB okay so here I have considered uh, as incorporated by Asha the 5 dB increment in the test signal and the noise signal by 10 dB increment so now there is SIS masking test or supra threshold masking in SIS masking we are not going to achieve plateau we are going to give one consistent one constant noise level and based on that we are going to give other year the test year we are going to give the uh, PV words 25 PV words and find out supra threshold mass value so our level will be PL presentation level that is the mass SRT value plus 40 minus IA plus ABG of the non-test here plus MEMC plus SF that is 10 so MEMC is nothing but minimum effective masking level correction factor okay so how we are going to measure this MEMC is 
when uh, particularly in every audiometer we are supposed to get the mmc separately and we are normal hearing individual so think uh, the normal hearing individual we are presenting the level of 40 db in one year and then we are going to keep the noise until his threshold shifts so we are going to find out the difference of the noise level and the shifted threshold and whatever the value it is that is considered mmc so in this example as you can see we are concentrated in this particular sis okay so right here it is 92 percent left here is 100 percent okay and there is masked here we are a uh, mass right here we are supposed to find out even though the right ear is shown as a moderately severe hearing loss via this pta okay as after doing masking we are supposed to concentrate only in the mass value not the unmasked value uh, unmasked pta so as we are seeing 61.25 as a masked as a pta that meant to say moderately severe hearing loss and we are getting sas as 92 percent this doesn't match so because of that we are supposed to get mass right air value and so with this formula we are going to get how much noise we are supposed to provide so pl or the presentation level will be 60 plus 40 60 means the srt mass srt of the right ear that is 60 plus 40 as we are always do srt plus 40 for doing sas so that will be our presentation level minus 40 ia plus abc of the non-test here that is 10 minus 5 plus 10 as mmc we are considering here and safety factor 10 so total 85 okay we are going to give noise to the non-test here and to the test here we are keeping going to keep the mic level as mass srd plus 40 so it is 60 plus 40 at 100 we are going to give the um, uh, pb word list 25 pb word list with noise at 85 and try to get how much the answer will be correct so sometimes what the problem might occur over here is like when we are going to give 60 plus 40 that is 100 level noise it might give the distorted speech signal to the individual with hearing loss and will be more difficult for him or her to reply back the correct answer or correct word. So in those conditions, we are supposed to find out at what level they are able to uh, find the stimulus being given, the mic level being given uh, comfortable enough for them to uh, reply back the correct word. And based on that, we can mention in our diagnosis that at this level, the noise is given, and at this level, the tone mic level was uh, presented. So, in that way, we can mention here because that uh, not only the procedure but the diagnosis or the uh, protocol might vary depending on the conditions. Like, for example, the neuropathic conditions, we might not get so. Uh, uh, so good uh, our SIS uh, percentage okay or the SRT values we might not get to the level what we see it in normal range so instead of uh, going for a manipulation or some kind of not believing in the client we might think from other aspect and see if there is something else in the client which we are supposed to detect With all this understanding, uh, we should also understand some of the features which might affect our play to method or masking approach only. So one of the conditions which, which might affect our masking is central masking. Here, uh, the small elevation, approximately around 5 dBHF, in the threshold of the signal in the test here might be seen when the noise is presented to the non-test here. But the noise presented to the non-test ear is not even the minimal masking level. It is still in the condition of under-masking the noise level. But still, there might be some shift in the test ear. So that is because of the central nervous system reaction to the masker. In this picture, what we can see is if this is a test ear and this is a non-test ear. So if the noise being presented to the test ear, but the noise presented to the non-test is non-test air is minimal. But still, it is not going through the bone conduction mode, but through the central artery pathway mode, the noise presented to this ear, non-test ear, is going through uh, CN 
okay cochlear nucleus to the soc and affecting the perception of the tone in the non test uh, test ear and therefore we can see the elevation of around 5 db in the test ear so this is a condition which is known as central masking so uh, with the central masking phenomenon uh, we should be very cl clear that it might happen and it is around 5 db sometime it might happen and so we should be careful regarding this phenomenon and we should not be surprised with this and uh, this the noise what is being to be presented to the central masking is below the minimum masking level so one more masking procedure which is not likely used all over the globe but it is one of the important condition what i believe uh, is reverse uh, reverse masking what is happening in this condition is uh either it is a unilateral or asymmetrical hearing loss condition with poorer ear having conductive component because of which as the conductive component is there there is occlusion effect and the poorer ear will hear louder waver in that particular ear so when we do the pta procedure first we do ac of both the ears then we do waver and wherever wherever it lateralizes we do the bc of that ear so in this condition as it is a unilateral or asymmetrical hearing loss uh, with a conductive component in the poorer ear it will lateralize to the poorer ear so we'll do bc of the poorer ear first but we know the bc what we achieved is not the correct bc it doesn't represent both the ears because with the help of pta we do understand the bc what we are achieving of the poorer ear might not represent both the ears so there is need to achieve the mass bc values of the better ear by masking the poorer ear such that the occlusion effect of the poorer ear is masked and once we achieve the mass bc value of the better ear again we are going to mask this better ear and find the mass bc value of the poorer ear so in this way actually we are going to get the two mass value of uh, better ear followed by poorer ear Uh, and i just wanted to give the brief introduction about this method so i had put in my slide over here now uh, one of the lacunae of uh, uh, plateau method is norton's dilemma so i had already mentioned the importance of in insert ear ear phone to avoid the norton's dilemma so a norton's dilemma is nothing but the condition where over masking occurs at the initial masking level it meant to say when you calculate the minimum effective masking level it is so high that it is above your maximum masking level somewhere here you will get the initial effective masking level i can give you the example over here like for example in this condition if you are going to measure the minimum masking level so you will achieve 75 and maximum masking level if you are using headphone you will achieve 45 if you are using insert phone you are is achieving 75 so if we compare between uh, if we are con uh, con seeing the headphone condition maximum masking level is 45 and minimum masking level is above that of maximum masking level means it is over masking happening and if you are using insert phone it is at the equal level still you are not able to achieve the masking okay so this is the condition of norton's dilemma and particularly it will happen when the abc is 50 or 55 db so that condition those conditions we are not able to do plateau method okay and the condition is mentioned by norton's in the year 1960 so as we are not able to do bc masking over here similarly we won't be able to do ac masking because for ac masking for maximum masking level we need bc of the test ear so what can we do in case of masking dilemma either you can use insert earphone if that is not possible like the example just now i gave then we can go for other masking procedures like optimized masking method or sal test optimized mask threshold is the recent approach being uh, it's given by turner in the year 2004 okay and here what exactly they say is whatever the unmasked air conduction value we are going to get for example it's a 50 dbhl unmasked air conduction value if we are getting then to find out the mass value we are going to give minus 10 db below that of the unmasked value 
the noise to the opposite here. For example, if we have 50 dB to the uh, test here being given, then the non-test here, the noise to be given is minus 10, that is 40. So when we give 40 dB noise to the non-test here and 50 to the test here, and if there is no shift of the threshold, then that is or around 5 dB shift of the threshold, then that is considered as a actual threshold or mass threshold. But if there is a shift in the threshold, then we are supposed to calculate how much is the shift. For example, here, there is a shift of 75, 75 dB, okay? So we found out that there is a shift from 50 to 75 dB until the individual heard the sound. So the difference is 25. So that meant to say we are supposed to add that much amount of value to the noise. Like we are giving earlier 40 dB noise. Now we'll add the difference between these two, that is 25 to this 40 dB, that is 65. So now we are going to give 65 dB noise to the non-test here. And we'll start the test in the test here with 75 only. And see if there is shift or not when the 65 dB noise is given. If there is no shift or 5 dB around shift, then 75 dB is the actual threshold. But if there is still shift of more than equal to 10 dB, then same procedure will be followed again and again until we reach audiometric limit. So similarly, as I showed you the uh, air conduction masking, similarly we can do bone conduction masking also with initial masking level set as whatever the BC value we have plus 30 dB. For example, if we have BC value 10, and we're supposed to find out the mask value of the test here, okay? Then the non-test here, you are going to give the noise 10 plus 30, that is at 40 dB, you are going to give the noise in the test here, a non-test here, and you are going to start your threshold estimation in the test here at 10 dB. And if there is a shift, if there is no shift, then 10 dB is only your test. If there is a shift, how much is the shift? that much has to be added to the noise level and to the test until the audiometric limit or you achieve the plateau, any one of the two. Another approach of finding out mass value or mass BC is SAL test. It is an indirect approach and it is the modified version of Ranibillet test and helpful in knowing hearing sensitivity at the cochlea. That meant to say BC mass value. And we can see in the picture the uh, placement of the headphone in the ears and the bone vibrator at the level of forehead. We can see, okay. And from the headphone, we are going to give tone, and from the bone vibrator, we are going to provide noise and to the maximum level, okay. So, whatever the tone we are going to provide uh, through the headphone. Particularly that narrowband noise will be provided through the forehead. So I'll tell the procedure now. So first step is the threshold is measured in quiet with headphone. So with headphone, first we are going to find out the threshold in quiet without noise, without headphone uh, bone vibrator giving noise. We are going to find out the threshold for each frequencies, for each ear. That is followed by Threshold measured with masking noise presented via bone vibrator at maximum in the fire. So that means like maximum means how much the capability the particular bone vibrator of specific audiometer has, that much amount of noise we are going to give via bone vibrator. And then we are going to find out the threshold of the uh, via uh, headphone. And we are going to see how much shift in the threshold is happening from that of the quiet situation. In this figure, what we can see is, let's focus first in the normal hearing individual. In normal hearing individual, in quiet, the threshold is zero for particular one specific frequency, okay? In particular one ear, one particular frequency, the threshold is zero. But when we give maximum amount of noise to that ear, we have bone vibrator, narrowband noise of that frequency, then the threshold got shifted to 55. So 0 dB of the threshold became 55. So the difference between these two is 55. So shift happened of 55 for normal hearing individual. So as it's a normal hearing individual, with this value as a reference of 55. 
so we should expect that much shift for everyone so this is our expected value where 55 db shift should be there for every individual of whatever loss it is or whatever the condition so we expect whenever this method is utilized 55 db shift should be there now we can see other conditions like in conductive hearing loss the quiet situation threshold is 50 then when we clip the noise it became 105 maximum amount of noise we have one vibrator in for it similarly in sensor neural hearing loss threshold is 50 and when we gave the noise it became 55 50 became 85 in mixed hearing loss now how to find out mass bc value mass bc value is nothing but expected threshold shift that is of the normal individual what we expect from everyone 55 minus actual threshold shift of the individual what he has achieved so in case of conductive hearing loss our expected threshold shift is always 55 that is of normal hearing individual then what we got it from the conductive hearing loss is from 50 it became 105 the difference is 55 only so 55 minus 55 is 0 so that's what the mass pc value of conductive hearing loss is 0 in this condition in sensor neural hearing loss what we can achieve is the expected threshold shift will be 55 minus actual threshold shift is 5. The difference between 50 minus and 55 here in sensor neural hearing loss shift is 5. So what we have actual shift is 5. So that will subtract from 55. That is 50. So sensor neural hearing loss we have mass PC threshold 50. Similarly, mixed hearing loss. We have shift of 35 from 50. It has turned to 85 shift is 35 that is actual threshold shift which will be subtracted from the normal that is 55 so it will be 20. so in this way we are having variations of mass pc threshold across frequencies and this can be done whenever there is a masking dilemma in plateau method then there is another approach known as Nair approach mm, particularly it is uh, uh, the fast forward method of plateau approach what we can say and how we are supposed to measure bc masking here is minimum masking level will measure and occlusion effect is added to it here we are not given the table of occlusion effect it is uh, that we are going to achieve on our own okay so our occlusion effect is nothing but unoccluded BC threshold minus occluded BC threshold, which is maintained in normal hearing individual in clinical setup. Our own clinic, we are going to find on our own how much is the occlusion effect across frequencies. Then maximum masking level is DC of the non-test here plus 40 or AC of the test here. So whichever is higher, that is what we are going to take as a maximum masking level so once we have this then we are going to start our presentation from the 10 to 15 db higher than that of the minimum masking level so initiate the masking level 15 to 20 db higher than the minimum masking level 15 to 20 db lower than the maximum masking level which the figure we had seen earlier during plateau that the plateau we have achieved in between max minimum and maximum masking level so this procedure by nair approach what they say is we'll start somewhere in between 15 to 20 db higher than the minimum masking level 15 to 20 db lower than that with the minimum maximum masking level and see and give the noise and see if there is shift in the threshold or not if there is no shift or 5 db shift then it's okay we'll consider that only as the actual threshold but if there is a shift by more than equal to 10 db then we are going to achieve uh, with a similar as a plateau like uh, you are going to increase 5 db to the signal uh, the tone and increase uh, the noise by 10 db like how i showed in the plateau hood method similar approach we are going to use over here similarly ac masking where you're going to use minimum masking level as ac of the non test here that what that's what we are going to start with the noise and maximum masking level as BC of the test here plus 40 dB or BC of the test here plus IA. Whichever is higher, that's what we are going to use masking level. Here in the Nair approach, what we can see is the 
option for maximum masking level whichever is higher and we can understand from here that it is trying to avoid masking the lana with this and so same procedure is followed as what i just explained is the bc masking so 15 to 20 db higher than that of the minimum masking level and that of the lower that of the maximum masking level will start and if we achieve the plateau it's fine and good otherwise we are supposed to continue with the plateau method until we achieve so in this way there are different types of masking procedures and some are the other procedure of course we follow in our institutions clinic hospital and uh, and uh, it doesn't matter which method we follow but it is always good to follow the method which is mostly described in the literature as it shows the authenticity of the particular method and uh, it will avoid the misrepresentation or misdiagnosis of the condition so this is all about the clinical masking uh, from back from back to the basics and these are all my references from different books thank you Thank you very much, Anus, uh, for very detailed presentation. Uh, it was really enlightening to go back and visit uh, masking, which is one of the most, uh, I think, one of the most, uh, what to say, confusing topic for most of us here. Uh, we'll be happy to take some questions if there's a, there are any questions in between. Um, I'll just like to add one more point, uh, which uh, I think uh, can answer a little bit of, uh, you know, when we are in Norton's dilemma. So there's one more test which uh, uses Stenger's principle called FIT. So we call fusion interference test. So that can also be used, which uh, sees the uh, lateralization of the sound and gets the answer when, whenever we get Norton's dilemma. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, we, we, we can take them and you can type them in the chat section. Or I can unmute anybody who, who, who or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, yes, Vivek, that, that fit method can also be one of the approach. Uh, uh, I should have mentioned here, but That's seeing okay. the time limit, I avoided it. Yeah, no, I just thought it might be a good point when because we are discussing all the different methods. Uh, adding that one more approach that can be the formula approach, what they mentioned mostly, and uh, that can also be one of the procedure or the approach uh, that can be used during masking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I think we we don't have much of a question. Maybe you you did quite a good presentation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so we'd like to thank you very much for the presentation, and hopefully we'll we'll see more and more of webinars coming in through Speech and Hearing Association of Nepal in coming days, and we'll keep you updated. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all and. I think we, we, we can end the meeting for today if there are no questions. Thank you very much. Thank you all. So I'm going to just unmute everyone. So if they have anything to say. Thank you. I think people are... Uh, Okay, so uh, we, we'll thank you uh, again, and then we'll, we'll end the meeting for today and hope to see you soon in your future. Thank you all. Have a good day. See you. Bye-bye.